This app in the App Store is making $600,000 every month, and it copied this game without writing a single line of code. With only one AI tool that I'm about to show you, we will build the entire game app. And let me tell you this, this is not just any video. Besides showing you how to build the game, because I'm also going to be showing you how to connect it to Stripe so you can start right along with making money. Now before anything else, we need to generate our character assets. These are the models we'll use later in the scene, so we're setting them up first. I'm using Meshi.ai for this since it's quick and gives us pretty solid results. Head over to Meshi.ai and for the main character, type in a soldier in an A pose without a gun. Once it's ready, rig the model and add an animation, you know, just a standard process. Next is the premium character. Use this prompt, a stealth soldier with a neutral standing pose. Same thing here again, just rig it, then add animation. Now with both characters done, the asset generation step is complete. The goal is to build something like Last War Survival, where the character auto runs forward, shoots automatically, and you can only control the side to side movement. So to kick things off, describe that core gameplay idea clearly to Rosebud. Mention the auto running, the auto shooting, and the limited horizontal control. And from there, we can see that Rosebud then puts together a starter project. It is still basic and a bit off from the final goal, but it does give us a foundation with forward movement and some auto shooting behavior. Next, we have to refine that base. So let's ask Rosebud to remove the existing shooting mechanism and then just make the player shoot forward automatically. Nothing too fancy yet. Now it's updated and there you go, the game now shoots forward as expected which simplifies the logic for now. After the shooting behavior is simplified, it's time to move on to the environment. Tell Rosebud to replace the current platform with a bridge, add some water around it, and make sure the bridge stretches out infinitely. And the result is a more fitting scene that matches the style and flow of the game. At this point, player movement still spans three lanes, which feels a bit much, honestly. So let's ask Rosebud to limit it to just two lanes and make the side-to-side -side motion smoother. And that small change helps the gameplay feel a lot more seamless and more responsive too. Alright, let's clean up the environment a little bit. The bridge is in place, but it's still, it's kind of bare underneath. So let's go ahead and tell Rosebud to add water below the bridge to, you know, give it a little bit more depth. And there it is. Water is added and the whole scene already feels less empty. The core setup is already done. It's time to clean up the visuals and fine-tune the mechanics to make the game feel more complete. And we're going to start by upgrading the water. The default texture looks a little bit too flat in my opinion, so I'm going to ask Rosebud to make it more realistic. Something with movement and a bit of wave action. That small change adds a lot of life to the scene. And from there, we'll move on to the bridge. Its texture still looks pretty basic also. So let's request an improvement to make it feel more like an actual structure, something with better materials and detail. And after the update, it does blend better with the environment. The obstacles are next, and they could use a bit of style and function. So let's ask Rosebud to make them slightly transparent, add design elements like borders at the ends, and create two types, one with a positive number and one with a negative. The numbers should also change as the player shoots at them, adding a bit more interaction to the gameplay. To make those number changes work, the logic behind the gates needs an update. Instead of breaking immediately when hit, each projectile should increase the gate's value. So a gate starting at minus 5 would go to minus 4, then minus 3, and so on with every hit. It only breaks when the player actually runs into it. At this point, projectiles are already behaving properly, and rather than passing straight through gates, each one should be destroyed on contact. This keeps things clean and avoids any visual clutter or any weird interactions. To top it all off, the skybox can use a refresh. So let's ask for something a little bit more vivid, maybe with a sun or a light sunset, but without having to touch the existing lighting setup. And doing that changes a lot too. The sky doesn't feel like an afterthought anymore. It actually sits right with everything else in the scene. Now that the environment and gameplay mechanics are settled up, the next step is to bring in the assets that were created earlier. So let's start by heading over to the assets section and upload the models that were generated. These include the character files that will be used in place of the default player. Once everything's uploaded, it's time to swap out the placeholder character. So let's replace the current player model with a one labeled regular character.fbx. This is just a visual update for now, no changes to behavior yet, just switching out the model so it matches the design direction. After the model is in place, the animation needs to be applied. So let's use the animation that goes with the regular character model and then make sure it also loops continuously so that our character always appears to be facing forward and ready for action. 
To complete this round of updates, it's Tugga set up a proper main menu. So let's add two buttons, one to start the game and another for character selection. Style the menu with a shooter or military theme, something that fits the tone of the game. And once that's added, the project starts feeling much closer to an actual playable build. After setting up the menu and character models, we are now going to integrate payment functionality so certain characters can be unlocked through Stripe. Start by working on the character store. One of the characters, Commander, needs to be locked by default. So let's make sure it looks visibly locked in the preview. So that when players click on it, a pop-up should appear with an unlock button. Pressing VAD should open another window that asks for an activation code and includes a purchase button. Right now, the Stripe setup should be functional, though the actual purchase link can be added a little bit later. To make the unlocking system more properly, add an activate button inside that same pop-up. If a player enters the correct code, use commander run lock for now. The character should become available and selectable just like the others. Once activation is in place, let's set up the purchase button so that when it is clicked, a specific link gets copied to the player's clipboard. And that's the link they'll use to complete the purchase and it's already provided in the description below. And with all of that wired up, the character store is fully functional with purchase and unlock logic working as expected. Now that the character store is working, it makes sense to actually see the character you pick in game. You know, it'd feel a bit off if you went through the trouble of unlocking or choosing someone and then the game just like loads a default model. So next, let's have Rosebud update the loading system so it pulls in the character the player actually selected and swaps out the old one properly. Start by updating the loading system so the player model and the game model both change depending on the selected character. And that way, whatever character is picked in the store will show up correctly in the game environment. Once that's working, it's time to introduce power-ups. The first one is a gun upgrade. Place the minigun.fdx model in front of a negative gate, scale it so it fits naturally, and then make it rotate to help it stand out. So when the player shoots this gate enough to flip it to a positive value, it should trigger the power-up, doubling the player's shooting rate once the gate is reached. Next up, let's tell Rosebud to create a second power-up called Player Upgrade. They should follow the same setup as the minigun, place the model in front of a gate, then make it rotate so it's easy to spot. But instead of using a separate asset, have it pull the same FDX model the player is using. That way, the upgrade feels tied to the character choice and keeps the visuals consistent throughout the game. After that, the player upgrade power-up is now in the game and ready to go. Now let's tell Rosebud again to update how the second power-up works. It shouldn't just sit there and look cool. When the player runs into it, it needs to actually duplicate the current character model to add more soldiers. To keep things from looking too cluttered, the spacing between each duplicate should be adjusted so that they're spread out properly and don't overlap on the screen. After the update, the power-up works as intended. The player can now collect it to upgrade and add extra units. After making that change, Rosebud updates the functionality so that now every time the player hits the gate the power up triggers and duplicates the soldiers just like it should now let's tell rosebud to adjust how the soldier upgrade works instead of just triggering once this needs to act as a recurring power up so every time the player runs into it the number of soldiers should increase based on the current value of the gate so let's say the gate shows 10 the player should have 10 soldiers after collecting it and to you know keep it from getting way out of hand let's make sure that there's a hard limit and cap the total at say 15 soldiers no matter how high the gate value gets. After making those changes Rosebud finalizes the setup. The power up now scales properly and the player can keep collecting it as they go gradually building up their squad up to the hard limit of 15. So now at this stage everything's finally clicking into place. The character logic, the upgrades, the animations, the environment, each part is doing what it's supposed to do. It's not over designed or cluttered it's just focused on the core loop that actually works. There's still plenty to to improve but this version already feels like a game with structure. The mechanics are tied together, the visuals are functional, and most of the heavy setup is out of the way. And from here it's all about tightening things up, adding more feedback, smoothing out the flow, maybe experimenting with how players progress. Alright so I want to thank you for watching and if you're building alongside this let's go out and take a breather and test what we've got and then I'll see you at the next one.